So I put the question out to Discord. What should we talk about? And SAT had a great idea. Why don't we talk about the Wisconsin Dockyard, since that's the new hotness, the new thing that's out there. And let's talk a little bit about uh, the the uh, missions and how to best complete those missions for the dockyard. And uh, then we can also maybe talk about uh, asymmetric battles, because I think that those two really tie in well together. Um, Andrew, do you think this is a British camo on Wisconsin? So I commented on this during the stream yesterday, but um, this to me feels very much uh, uh, hearkening back to the Great White Fleet. If you look up uh, history, the Great White Fleet was a, was a uh, U.S. fleet that was put together in part by Teddy Roosevelt, who was um, secretary, assistant secretary of the Navy or secretary of the Navy. I can't remember which of the two. And then later became president of the United States. He had his uh, big stick policy. And at the time, naval power was the big stick. So uh, he uh, helped commission a whole bunch of uh, new ships to be produced. And he had them all painted white with gold on top as, as a way to uh, make the fleet stand out even more. And then he sent them on a world tour. So I have a feeling that this is the idea behind the Wisconsin's camo. Personally, I don't like it, but it's pretty. I, I just I'd rather see a historical camo uh, than a, a made up one like this. Now. If you want proof of what I'm talking about here... Oh, let me get out of asymmetric for a second. If you want proof of what I'm talking about here, you have to look no farther than the Tier 2 Albany. You see the similarity? There you have it. I know a lot of people say this looks like the British Heavy Cruisers. Well, Wargaming used a similar color scheme for the British Heavy Cruiser line. So I can totally see why people say, that's, that's British. It's also America. Again... With, with with some some historical license put into place. Um, hello, nice eater. How's it going? Bring up the Goliath and Victorian white camo. Well, yeah, okay, sure. All of a sudden, we have a different uh, Zash chat, but that's okay. Here's our Goliath with the Victorian white. Same deal. Red reader says more people over here. <laughs> That is true. Welcome back over to Twitch. You're welcome to hang out on either side. As you can see, chat now shows up on the screen, which is kind of fun. Also compare the special camo for the Tier 3 Varieg. Uh, is, uh, is that the Soviet? Too many. Here it is. Cannons are black on the Wisconsin. That is true, they are. So we have to go to permit camos and that one. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about the fact that other navies thought about using white to color their ships. Shocker. Anyway. Hello, Arshaya. Uh, welcome on in. So we are doing a Zach chat. We're talking about the Wisconsin and we're going to talk about the dockyard missions. Now, there's been a lot of chatter about these missions. Some people feel that they are way too grindy. Others feel that it's acceptable. And some people just like to complain no matter what. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, the dockyard. Now, before we get into uh, the missions, I want to highlight something that's very important. And that is the fact that this is the first dockyard since the, I believe, since the original Puerto Rico. SAT, you can correct me if I'm wrong in chat. You can too. The first dockyard since the original Puerto Rico that you can finish completely for free. If you have one condition. And that one condition is the West Virginia. If you already have the West Virginia 44, you can finish the dockyard for free. Assuming that you have... Uh, completed all the stages so you do all of the missions and get all of the all of the phases done every other dockyard could not be finished for free other than the original puerto rico dockyard which was grindy as all get out but anyways terribly timed ad i know cthulhu it is what it is remember i am also streaming over on youtube and you can always pop over to youtube to watch the stream without an ad if you're on twitch putting that out there anyways so um anyway you have the ability 
to do it for free if you have the West Virginia 44. If you don't, you're going to have to spend some doubloons, as is always the case. Um, I want to highly recommend. I think I've, I can't get to it again because I've already done it. But you've got the ability to buy two different booster packs. One is, I think, nine stages and the other one is two. I highly recommend considering buying the two. And the reason for that is simple. It gives you the forgiveness of missing out on two of the missions. So I want you to consider that. And obviously say no. I've got a lot of doubloons, so it really doesn't matter to me. For you, of course, that, that's a different story. So consider it. Um, I like to think about this, and I always do this on the dockyard, even if I get the ship. But anyways, I like to get to the end. Why? Because when you get to the end, you get steel. And I always like getting extra steel. Um, but you got to think about these. Um, you got to think about these booster packs as an insurance policy. It's an insurance policy that life doesn't happen and life doesn't get in the way of completing something. If it does, hey, good thing that you bought the insurance policy that is the, the uh, boosters at the start. You could also wait till the end. And then you can complete with the balloons here, whatever stages you need left over. But you're doing that at full price versus buying at the at the beginning at a discount. So I always recommend you consider buying one of those boosters. Just putting that out there. Okay, just put it out there. It's your doubloons. You, you do what you want with it. Perfectly up to you. Uh, SAT, did I miss anything or shall we go into the missions now? So there's the starter pack that gives you nine missions at the start. That gives yes. you much more room to wiggle with. It costs yes. about $50, if I remember correctly. Let me take and a look. There's, there's a couple of harder missions at the end that takes a lot of time. So if you don't feel like going through that, then the full ahead starter pack is actually not a bad buy. Remember, mm -hmm. it is a tier 10 ship. And if you spend $50 on it, it's still actually a good deal. Right. Um, now, again, it's totally up to you. It, it's, it's, as Red Reader says, if you really intend to get the ship, it makes sense to get the boosters. Cthulhu also has an interesting per perspective, and his is, I'm going to do as much as I can, and if life gets in the way and I need to spend at the end, then I'll decide how much I need to spend. That's a perfectly fine way of doing it, too. The starter pack is simply a way for you to guesstimate how much effort you're going to be able to put in. And SAT brings up a good point. We're going to look at the missions in a second. And a lot of times in the dockyard, the later stages of the missions, like the final set of missions, are extremely grindy. Um, they make you log in and play the game for four hours uh, every day, for example, or something like that kind of grindy. So you really want to be thinking about this. Um, and so maybe, maybe have that lens on right? Uh, how much do I want to grind and how much do I want to, to pay? That's an answer for everybody, uh, for, for, you know, to make themselves as we talk through the combat missions. Red Rider. Okay, I apologize. Thank you for correcting the pronunciation. That's important. All right, so let's take a look. I played the game yesterday. I played the game yesterday for three hours with good breaks in between. And you'll notice that I've already completed five out of six for the last dockyard phase. Everything else is just credits. So, I mean, that's really not bad. If you have West Virginia 44, you have an extra token in hand to skip the 60k base XP task in the last directive. Good point. Good point, Cthulhu. So, the first stage, I think everybody would agree this is easy. And it's designed to be easy, right? Um, asymmetric makes it easy, and we're going to talk about that once we get through uh, looking at all the missions. But get ribbons, get ribbons, get ribbons. Help your team get 120k uh, damage on spotting. Ooh, you get blue boosters out of that. That's kind of sexy. Good for grinding. You can only do that in random and ranked. You'll note that every other of these missions can be completed in basically every game type, with the caveat that operations give you half performance. So, in other words, this says 800 ribbons. If you're going to grind this out in operations, you actually need 1,600 ribbons if you did this all in operations. So you want to keep that in mind. You finished phase one and two nights in co-op. Yeah. The first, the first few um, mission chains are typically designed to be pretty easy. Again, that might get you into that sunk cost feeling of 
well, I can do this, or I don't need to spend the doubloons, or what have you. It all comes down to how you look at it. SAT, any commentary on the first chain? I mean, it's self-explanatory. Yeah, it is pretty much the easiest. There is a couple ships that are easier, like if you want to get battleship ribbons, then just play Illinois or Sleefin. But honestly, this is the easiest week, so just play whatever mm -hmm. you want. Yeah, uh, for battleship ribbons, a secondary battleship is a great idea. Um, Illinois is a great idea if you're if you're a main gun enthusiast, right? Because uh, they've got the high DPM, high reload. Um, Mecklenburg is also a decent choice because it's got smaller caliber guns that reload faster and it's got a lot of barrels. You have a better chance of getting more hits. By the way, if you want to get ribbons, if your ribbons is your focus, you probably want to spam HE. Why? Because when you spam HE, you get more incapacitations and you get more fires. Yes, you'll miss out on citadels, but that actually works well, especially in co-op because you're not killing your target as quickly. So you get to, fa you get to farm them for even more ribbons. That's the big brain right there. For aircraft carriers, um, same. Yes. So I'll, I'll actually argue AP. So if you shoot at a Bowen battle uh, battleship, you're gonna do negative damage. So if you get a destroyer <laughs> and sh like a Harakumo <laughs> and shoot a Bowen battleship all night, then you can literally do like 10k damage in like 1500 hits. Thank you. That was the other part I was going to mention, and I forgot to, so I'm glad you brought that up. This brings back memories of myself, Puddin, and Red Sea Bear when we would play um, this one tournament, uh, this one event uh, for warships. Oh, goodness. Six or seven years ago. You probably remember this one, SAT, the Pearl event. You had to get a certain number of ribbons within a week. Oh, yeah. Yep. And so what we did was Sea Bear and I parked ourselves in Belfast's in a smoke this is before smoke firing penalty existed we'd park ourselves in smoke and we'd have Puddin on out there in any tier 7 destroyer scouting for us and we would switch to AP for exactly the reason uh, SAT just mentioned because you get bounces you get shatters and you get bounces and those still count as ribbons and as you said they don't do any damage or if they get over pens right they do very negligible damage so we would switch to that. Ironically enough, in random battles, for whatever reason, we would switch to AP and our targets decided to go sideways. It is what it is. Um, Claude says, the issue I have now... Hey, Hoo Jam. Um, the issue I have now is I have to wait five days until the next stage is available. Why? This is the issue I've got with Dockyards. I'll explain that in just a moment. Most Dockyards, you can come into it week five and catch up and complete it on time. That is also true, Hoo Jam. So, uh, for carriers, you may want to consider like a German carrier because you can use their secondaries. And then you've got EP rockets that, go back to what we were just saying, you can uh, smack ba onto Bawan targets. Cruisers, um, same kind of deal. Depends on, you know, whatever you want, but probably a light cruiser, something you can use to spam uh, a lot of shells. I'm thinking Kutuzov, I'm thinking um, Pan, Pan Asian. Light cruisers is a good one, that sort of thing. British carriers with cluster bombs could work too. That is true. That is true. But I really think, if, especially if you're doing it in co-op, you, you just outfit that sucker for secondaries and just W in. Uh, for destroyers, anything high rate of fire, uh, Kitakaze, Akizuki. This is an uh, this is a great opportunity to reset uh, that gunboat Japanese gunboat destroyer line and and just laugh your way through it again and collect ribbons at the same time. Submarines, just don't play them. Or, if you got an I-56, go on the surface and just shoot things with your gun. I don't know. It's pretty much just don't play subs. You'll get like two ribbons per game. It's really hard to get ribbons and subs. That's why I said play I-56 and surface and shoot your gun. Uh, alternately, a ping is a ribbon, right? So if you keep pinging, ping all the things. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and then this one, this one is going to be rough. Uh, play destroyer or yeah, you can't play battleship and rank, or you can't play carry and ranked or do they, yeah, you can't play carry and ranked. So just play, play a destroyer and ranked and just sail around the spot, I guess. Yeah. Ping battleships at max range. Right. Yep. And remember that mission can only complete it in ranked or randoms. So yep. don't go into asymmetric and try to complete it. Right. So that's why I think if you're playing ranked battles, you can maybe 
get your destroyer ribbons done in ranked because destroyers win games anyways if you're trying to win and and you can spot you can play like a stealthy destroyer and just you know it's a good opportunity to play like shimakaze for example or something and just luck chuck torpedoes for days yeah. uh aircraft shot down play the game incapacitations play the game 20 kills play the game yeah like this is all play the games that, that that's it Let's move on to the second set then. Now, this is available in five days. Let's go back to the question. Why is it that you have to wait? It's very simple. Because they don't want... Wargaming doesn't want you getting a head start on the last set of missions. If they time gate the missions, then they force you to have a certain amount of time maximum to complete what is typically the grindiest part of the dockyard chains which is the last one, or sometimes the second to last, depending on the dockyard. So if they, if they allowed you to move on to the next one right off the bat, there, there are players right now who would probably be on stage six already. So Wargaming doesn't want that because they want you to be investing your time um, throughout the entire dockyard process, not just burst through it at once. Now, the, opportun- the, the, the opposite idea is you've got a month and 16 days until this opens up. As Hujam mentioned, you can wait about a month or something. I wouldn't wait that long, but you get the idea. And, and then you can, you know, this one's unlocked, 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 and you can blow through them then. So that's another opportunity. Go back to what I was talking about with the starter packs, right? Another reason Wargaming does this is to encourage you to spend doubloons on the starter packs, or if you fail to finish a mission in the time, spend doubloons finishing up the starter pack. It's just a monetization scheme, guys. That's all there is. Remember, this is a free-to-play game. You spend the money if you want, or you don't if you don't want to. That's all there is to it. All right, round two starts in five days. 30 set on fire. Play the game. 15 flooding ribbons. Play the game. Note that depth charging submarines can cause floods and they can also cause fires. So just go around depth charge subs and and laugh your way to finishing those missions. 1900 base XP. Now, this is a good amount of base XP. Um, Note that that's base XP, so you can't use any any of the... um, Simboto with a sub. Thank you for subbing, Simboto. Um, that was loud. Wow. I'll have to fix that. Um, so... Followed and lady. Onwards unto the seas and the glory of his royal fleet. Down with those who would oppose the Lord. Hello. <laughs> well, thank Hello. you, Simboto. Hi, Nate. Um, so anyway, so this is this is 1900 base XP. Um, you're, you're going to have to just play that through without using any of the boosters. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, that's going to be, as Cthulhu says, 2,715 over the course of a week per day. So that's not too bad. Later, when you get higher numbers, and that's why I just want to talk about base XP missions. When you, when you have high numbers of base XP, a good place to do that, if you have a clan, is clan battles. Because you get good base XP for wins, especially early in the season. Um, if you're on a clan like um, 07 um, and you just club your way through Um, but you can see you've got even brawls here brawls is another good way to get base XP 8 captured or assisted in capture ribbons this one is always pain and the reason this one is always pain is because most of the time when you're working on this mission the game decides to give you standard battles and you only have one base cap that you can cap and that's it you also can't get base decap or defense ribbons. Those are the easiest ones to farm. So this one is tough. It's, this one is also difficult in co-op simply because the games are over so quickly. Uh, you might be able to come away with one cap in a game. Yeah, um, co-op is still the fastest, but it will hmm. take a couple of battles. I would say at least five or six. Right. No way around it. No. Now, Brawls is another option for getting base caps because they're smaller, closer maps. And uh, depending on the map, you might be able to go to the smaller cap and grab it and stuff like that. And this one is not even possible in operations. That's a very good point, Pockington. Thank you for sharing that. You're right. Uh, Get 150 torpedo hits ribbons. Play the... Oh, wait. That's with carriers. 
Uh, so you want to play Japanese carriers uh, for that, especially if you've got a Kaga. That's a really good one to do. I suppose you could also play Soviet carriers with their torpedoes. Um, just about any carrier line is fine. You can grind up the Yorktown and Essex doing this one. Yeah, Soviet if you can lead the torps, exactly. Um, Malta's a good choice as well for that one. Um, battleship. Main battery or... Oh, come on, this this there's like Schlieffen written all over it. So whatever. Um, and then main battery or secondary battery hits for cruisers. Uh, Schroeder, if you have Schroeder, this is a really good option because you can build a secondary cruiser with it. Um, it Cole, Napoli. Colbert works really well. A secondary spec, Napoli works. The thing about Napoli is that it's got um, high caliber main battery, so uh, it's a little bit slower for ribbons unless you can park in um, in smoke and just farm with secondaries. Oh, okay. Secondary Hindenburg could work. Michelangelo could work. Same idea as what I just said with the Napoli, sit in smoke and farm. Um, those can work. Torpedo hits ribbons in Destroyer. It's kind of like play anything other than maybe a Soviet gunboat destroyer. Jaeger could work for this one. Correct. Absolutely. Um, Pan-European destroyers could work. Yes. Actually, those would be good because they're very low damage um, and low flood chance. So you get to play with your target a little bit more. Play with their food more. Hey, Pally. So for torpedo hits, what I do is I take a French destroyer like Kleber or Marceau, <laughs> uh, Kleber or uh, Mogador. Mm. I YOLO the nearest battleship in co-op, torp it, die, go to next game. Right. Okay. Makes sense. It is, Makes sense. It is the fastest way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just you just turn yourself into a delivery system. Now you can also do this with Paulo Emilio, because um, mm -hmm. you know that's even more fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. Torpedo hits. That's dirty. Torpedo hits with subs again. Don't bother. Uh, and then in one battle, one hundred seventy-five thousand damage to ships in one battle. You play ranked until you get this. Now, I'm going to recommend... Part of the reason I say don't bother with subs is because what a lot of players will like to do... You'll note that each of these dockyard phases has a class-specific mission to complete. So what I would recommend is if you have a particular class you don't like, don't play that class. And you wait until you get down to, like, here. And then... You go through that class, right? Let's say you don't like, uh, you don't, you don't want to do subs. Then you just play nothing but sub at the very end, and you complete mission here, 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 mission here for subs. All at once, you're getting the most progress for a class that you hate to play. You don't have to complete all of these missions to do the Wisconsin Dockyard. As you can see, I just have to do one more of these. And then the rest of these missions are just bonus. They're credits, bonus, right? They're blue booster, bonus. So something to, something to consider, something to keep in mind. Um, so that was sub. Okay, so we got through that. Anything else for section two? All right. Let's go to section three, Pacific Storms. That's two weeks from now, just about. 800 ribbons. Play the game. Main battery hits. Play the game. Note that this is not class specific anymore. Play the game. Earn a ton of credits. Play the game. This one can be boosted with credit boosters. So if you want to get it done quicker, you can do that. I would only recommend you do this if you are behind. Behind meaning that this one here is about to open or has already opened and you haven't unlocked it yet because you're still on stage three. If that's the case, that's when, okay, you can go ahead and do the boosters if you're worried about falling behind and staying behind. Ads are coming through. Another reminder that I do also stream on YouTube if you want to be able to stay in with the action. Um, so anyways, um, earning XP, same thing. You can put the boosters on if you need to. Get rocket hits and carriers. Now this is... 450. This is pretty grindy. Wouldn't you agree, SAT? Uh, let's avoid getting 450 rocket hits. That takes a couple years. So, the best way to do this is probably going to be... 
You want to ban mid roll? Like I said, you, you got YouTube. It's all good. Um, you can always go in and you can uh, play like a, a German, uh, for example, a German um, ship with loot yens. Get a bunch of ribbons and then you can proc his ability and stuff. That might help, but still, this is a lot of work. So this is this is one of those missions that maybe you don't even complete until you get later on down here and you're working on other ones. Uh, aircraft... I feel that's more of a I am I only have carriers and I'm very desperate to complete missions kind of mission. Yeah. Like literally right. do something else. Right, exactly. Um as far as hey KPT, how's it going? Um the the uh battleship one here, getting a hundred aircraft shot down. Uh, I would say play the game, but most importantly, division with a friend who's playing a carrier. That ensures that there's planes out there. And play a battleship that's got really good anti-air. Hmm. Like the Wisconsin that just happens to have defensive anti-air fire. Or Thunderer. Or... I don't know. Ohio? Florida. Florida's a good one. Vermont line. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Pac. But definitely uh, division with a carrier. That makes your life a lot easier if, you, if you're if you trying to get this mission done. Yeah, you mo it's, you're mostly hoping that you get into a carrier match, which is very unreliable. Right. When you division with the carrier in random battles or co-op battles, obviously you have mirrored matchmaking. You will guarantee at least one carrier on the enemy team when you do that. Ranked battles does not have carriers right now, so this is not an easy mission to do, to do if you're only playing ranked. Um, keep in mind... That, that you can still shoot down other planes. You can shoot down um, spotter planes. Uh, you can shoot down ASW aircraft. You can shoot down uh, Dutch oven aircraft, right? The, the uh, D Dutch airstrike. Justin, yep, Kansas line has good anti-air. Exactly, that's uh, Kansas-Vermont line. Yep. Um, so, and then you've got um, brawls. Brawls with aircraft shot down. That one's, a, that one's a toughie because there's no guarantee you'll find a carrier on the enemy team. Um, they are somewhat popular. And then asymmetric battles, uh, same deal. There's no guarantee that you'll find a carrier on the enemy team. Rank can also probably shoot down the planes from the hybrids. Yes, that's true, Pally. Thank you. Yeah, right. You'll, you'll typically find carriers in asymmetric, but there's no guarantee. And that's a good point, I wax. They are going to be lower tier. Torpedo hits for cruisers. Honestly, um, Pockington suggests like the, the Japanese uh, light cruiser line. That's a good choice. Um, the Pan-Asian, like the Jinan line, is a good choice as well. Alternately, you can play super aggressive German cruisers and just run up into people's face and torpedo them and die and rinse and repeat. Kind of like what SAT mentioned earlier with the uh, French destroyers. Just remember to do it in co-op. Because if you try it in randoms or, uh, or asymmetrical, People might not like you. Yeah. Or ranked. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> I just got this... I just got this mental image of, like, YOLOing in on, on a German cruiser, dying, torpedoes splat, and then, like, everybody being like, WTF! And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm just trying to work on my torpedo missions, y'all. Um, and the, the British like cruisers, right? They've got lots of torpedoes, too. Like, Minotaur. And you can single fire them too, which might actually, ooh, that could be very fun actually if you just YOLO charge them because then you then you're guaranteeing multiple hits in one spot, and you can saturate your target to get more torpedo hits. Here's the big brain. Look at that, it's rolling. Um, also, since it's low tiers, it doesn't cost as much per co-op mission, so mm. you can you can spam like two or three games and it won't break your bank. Mm -hmm. Aggressive Venezia or Napoli, fuel, oil, smoke, run up, and yep, exactly. You can, you can do that too. You can do little friendships. I mean, there's there's so many cruisers you can just be super aggressive with and whatever. Keep in mind that these are torpedo hits, so you can't rams don't count. So you can't do this with American ships as much. Arshai, is that a head banging flame or something? What is that? Iro wag. Okay. Anyway, um, main battery hits with destroyers. Play the Japanese gunboat destroyer line, or any gunboat destroyer line, frankly, and you're good. Argumo is statistically the best destroyer, but mm -hmm. yeah, any gunboat ship will work. 
Yep. Friesland is a, is a fantastic choice here um, because you can just sit and smoke and, and just not think if you're going to play it in like randoms or ranked. Um, also, remember the AP trick we talked about? Yep. Yep. Poor Sherman. Poor Sherman could work. Um, uh, Sherman is surprisingly not that good because it doesn't throw that many shells out. Mm. I actually looked at I looked at how many shells ships will put out per minute, and Sherman mm -hmm. is not that high compared to other ships. So if you're simply looking for, for battery hits, then you want to spam as much as you can. Yeah, Haragumo is the absolute best, as I said, but mm -hmm. other gunboat destroyers will work. Yep. Sherman is like, is it in that it'll work category, just not the most optimal, of course. Yep. 20,000 base XP in subs? Don't play subs for right now. It's just set that mission aside, like I said, for the end. Imagine you're not going to do it. Just my recommendation. That's a lot of base XP to get in subs. Haru yeah. is always on reset. That is true. Mine is too. What if you love to play subs? Then play them. It's just that the, the, <laughs> the, the... Get a different the, favorite class. The, <laughs> the, the problem with subs, Nate, it, it, it's not, it's not yeah. subs. It's simply the fact that it's much more difficult to complete the missions, like getting 100 torpedoes in a sub. That takes forever, right. unless you're YOLOing things in co-op, which, which is fine. I, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are, Nate. Of course you are. All right. Um, so that was Pacific Storms, right? Yep. And okay. So then now we're on five stars for victory. 120 torpedo spots. That's like, again, play the game. It'll happen, right? Uh, getting potential damage. This one is going to take a bit. Uh, you're going to play battleships primarily, or you're going to play cruisers that are heavily armored like Moskva. Petropavlovsk. These are ones that you typically just sit, bow in, and laugh as shells bounce off your heavily armored sides. Uh, Napoli is a good choice for this. Um, alternately, you can play super long-range kiting ship like Test Ship Zhao, French cruisers, whatever, and just dare people to shoot at you, and they will, and, and ask in the potential damage, and when you die, because you will, just start up another game. So... If you want to complete in a few missions, play Kremlin or Ushakov. You will get at least mm -hmm. three, mil three or four million potential damage per game. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ushakov Find especially is pretty good for this. I'm sorry, say that again? Ushakov, Ushakov especially yeah. is good for this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Find a popular spot in the map, park yourself right there, and just say, dare, dare the enemy to come chase you down. Um, this is a good option for ranked battles as well. You can grind some steel in ranked at the same time as long as you can stomach it. That mission is doing itself when you're doing other missions. That's correct. Absolutely is. Um, help your team cause damage upon spotting. Play the game, especially in a destroyer or carrier. Uh, or sub, I guess. But uh, 2 million damage? Whatever. Cruiser, bat, play your favorite ships. Get 250 bomb hit. Ship. I'm sorry? Play a high tier ship. Easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or low tier and just... I mean, you play whatever you want. You'll get there eventually. That's the thing. Bomb hits missions and carriers. That's not too bad. I'm thinking the British because the carpet bombs is probably the best choice here. Um, avoid a lot of torps. Yes, absolutely. You can easily get 150k spotting in an operation as a carrier. Good point, Pockington. Good point. U.S. support CV for the bomb hits. Yeah, could be. Could be an option, too. Yep. Uh, Citadel hits... With battleships, um, I mean that's that's play battleship. You'll be fine. If you're specifically trying to rush through it, play Illinois and mm -hmm. go into go into co-op or asymmetrical. Find the broadside cruiser. Boom, seven citadels. Easy. That's right. Um, 120 aircraft shot down or shot bomb down by fighter ribbons. Same thing I said before. Division with the carrier in co-op or ranked and get it done. Um, or not, not ranked, co-op or randoms, I mean. Um, you won't get very far with this in ranked, unless ranked changes in 20 days from now. Um, brawls could work, asymmetric, good opportunity. 15 captures or assisted capture ribbons, again, this time for destroyers. This one will be pain. It's just a lot of games you're going to have to play, hoping that you're able to get caps. Submarine, kill 17 ships. Again, set that one aside. <laughs> you're, you're noticing a theme here, probably. 
right? Set that one aside. Okay? Set it aside. Yeah. It's not a knock against submarines as a class as a whole, but unfortunately, mm. the missions are just not well designed for them. Their requirements Bingo. are very high. Bingo. And that's what we've been trying to say. Seventh Fleet Flagship is the next one. That's a month from now. If you're still watching this video a month from now, thank you. Um, get 40 spotted ribbons. Play carrier. It's easy. The, the thing that's going to be frustrating about this is other people are going to be doing this at the same time. You're playing, say, a destroyer trying to get spots, and someone's playing carrier trying to get spots, and they're going to spot everything in front of you, and then you're going to be frustrated. Yep. If you play carriers, you'll um, play carriers and co-op. You can easily get, like, eight or ten spotting ribbons in one game. Yeah. Just just play carry, go spot the entire enemy team, and then uh, YOLO and die and do another one. Or whatever. Work on your rocket hit ribbons or bomb hit ribbons or whatever. You hope this event scares away subplay. If anything, it will most likely encourage subplay because you're going to have a lot of players that aren't thinking about like what I said, that these are some of these missions are optional. Thanks for the reminder, uh, Justin, or uh, that's what. Um, and, and they're going to try to get every single one of the missions done. So you're going to possibly see more people playing sub as a result. What's up, sir? Well, in fact, all you need is six. You only need to complete six of the tasks to progress to the next stage. Exactly. So two of those you'll have to get because those have uh, dockyard tokens. And then you mm -hmm. complete four optionals. So yeah, right. that's why we keep saying skip the sub ones. Those are the hardest. Just ignore those. Do everything else. I, I would I would say consider um, consider playing subs at the end when you're done with everything. I'm doing fine, Sir Nick. Uh, we're doing a Snapchat chat right now. We're talking about the mission chain and stuff, and then we'll talk about what you do on Twitch and all that in a little bit. So stay tuned if you'd like. Um, so 7th Fleet Flagship, we've got 40 spotted ribbons. Play the game. We talked about that. Torpedo hits. Again, play the game. You'll get there. Assisted in capture. We, we said that's pain. And look, there's more pain. Uh, nine and a half million credits. So you can boost that if you want to. That's not so bad, especially because you can also do clan battles. 200 aircraft shot down in a carrier. <sighs> Guys, that's, that's not too bad. Especially if you're playing support carrier. You're fine. Like the new American support. This is a great opportunity to grind that out doing this mission. If, and any of the other carriers. have a burn... If you have the tier six Baron, that's mm. actually a very good mission for you. Yes, with with intercepts, Absur absolutely right, Pac. Yes. Yep. Important thing Make to have. Sure you have the right build. Mm -hmm. The important thing is to have the next directive open at the time gate. So you want to be finishing four before twenty six days from now. Ideally, at least twenty five days from now. Right is when you're done with stage four, so that when stage five unlocks, boom, you can immediately run into it. That's a very good point, Cthulhu. And like I said, Hello. if you're behind behind that's when you consider using the boosters and and getting that stuff done hi grunty um so we've got aircraft shot down with carriers get base xp thirty thousand base xp in battleships this one i mean you're you're going to end up doing a lot of probably any whatever battle mode you want just play battleship and you're fine frankly <laughs> Uh, set on fire or cause flooding ribbons because it's set on fire and because it's flooding you could play american light cruisers but that only helps you justify one of them other than um depth charging things and ramming things so as pockington suggests janan or yodo line would be good here i think honestly the janan line the pan a uh, pan asian uh, light cruiser line is going to be the best choice because you can smoke up and you can just sit back and farm. You can luck chuck out your uh, deep water torpedoes that are a little bit harder to hit. Um, I can't remember. Does it have? It does have ASW, right? Didn't they add it? Uh, the Gino. What? Yeah, the Gino line. Uh, they have ship uh, ship ASW. Roll like off. You have to drop, yeah, roll off, which okay. is very unfortunate. Right, because roll off depth charges do cause floods and fires. Flint is a very good option. That's right, that twit. Yes, Flint is a good option. Um, honestly speaking, I would, choice. I would honestly just ignore the uh, cause flooding ribbons. You can mm -hmm. you can get a lot more fire ribbons than flooding. So I would mostly ignore the flooding ribbons and just mm -hmm. pick any uh, typical cruiser, like yeah. uh, just just anything that isn't like Minotaur, yeah. or AP only. <laughs> if you're trying to do um, that, I have concerns. Smolensk works. I mean, 
Des Moines works. You could just play Yodel Line, right? Yeah. We talked about, mentioned earlier. You got it. Um, 25,000 base XP in a destroyer. Same deal. Play the game a lot. You'll get it done. Funny enough, Bloody... this also applies to clan battles. So you could actually, if mm -hmm. you are a destroyer main, you can get this done in 10 wins. Mm-hmm. It's a very good point. Very good point. Um, causing flooding ribbons and sub again. Just set that one to the side and you can do that later. And then get four destroyed ribbons in one battle. That's not too bad either. All right. Next, uh, the next mission line is titled Temper Temper. Anybody know the story behind that phrase Temper Temper in relation to the Wisconsin? She shot it from the shore by some low caliber shells and fired the main battery guns back. Correct. And a destroyer uh, sent a message, temper, temper. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it, it's actually a thing. Anyways, um, so for this one, this is a month and two days away. Uh, earn five achievements. Now, it doesn't say earn five achievements in one battle. It says earn five achievements. If it's in one battle, this is tougher. If it's just earn five, just play the game. You'll be fine. There's no way this is in one battle. Five would be ridiculous. You'll Ridiculous. be surprised. Ridiculously uh, easy to get five, you mean? Or it's ridiculous to have a mission requiring five achievements in one battle? Yeah, the latter. The latter. Now, keep in mind that typically Wargaming will put the grindier, more difficult mission at the bottom of the chain. So if, it, if this was in one battle, you would probably find it here at the bottom. Oh, look, in one battle caused this much of damage to ships. See, that's the harder mission because it gives you nice boosters. Um, so play the game. 20 to Citadel hits. We talked about how to get Citadel hits before. Uh, 20 battles doing top five of your team by experience received. This is a fantastically easy one to do in co-op because you've got smaller number of teams. You just YOLO in, shoot all the things, and you're top five. Alternately, play ranked because there's even fewer people in ranked. It's six on six this season. If it stays that way in a month and two days from now, you're almost guaranteed top five every time you play. Also asymmetric. asymmetrical. Yep, because there's only five players. That's right. So if asymmetric is available a month and two days from now, that's a really good option. Brawl, three on three, whatever, that can work as well too. Leaves in 32 days. So, you know. There you go. Unlucky. Anyway, unlucky. Um, but if brawls come up, this is fantastically easy to do. And brawls, unless brawl becomes anything higher than five versus five, even then it's still pretty easy to do in brawl. Uh, 4,500 ribbons. Play the game. Um, that's a lot of ribbons, so high DPM ships. We talked about how you can do that in each of the classes earlier. Yep. Honestly, you'll probably ignore it because you're too busy completing any other mission. Exactly. Exactly. I would. I'd honestly recommend you focus your first efforts on class specific missions. Which class specific missions are you going to work on? I would pick three of the five classes here, and and just work through those. Pick a ship or two for each of those different classes, and and just blow your way through it. And then when you're done with that, then look at what's left and say, okay, what else do I need to do? And how soon is the next stage unlocking? How much time do I have to complete these missions before the next stage unlocks? 30 million potential in a cruiser is going to take a while. I actually have a Zat chat about how you can easily farm potential damage in co-op. Very quick Cliff's Nose version. You take a very tanky ship like the Moskva, like the Napoli. You go in a co-op. You have full speed W towards the enemy. While you're doing it, you are firing your gun every 10 seconds. And there's the ad again. And reminder, once again, I am doing this over on YouTube. So you, uh, you keep firing your guns, your main gun, every 10 seconds. Why? You want your gun bloom to go out as far as possible. Here's the extra big brain. Change your six slot module from reload to range so that your gun bloom goes even farther. If you've got a plane that you can launch, launch the plane. Don't bloom even farther. You want to be spotted as soon as possible in that co-op battle because as soon as you're spotted, things that have range to shoot you will shoot you. That's potential damage. You keep them targeting you. 
get yourself on fire, don't put it out. You want to be lower HP so that the bots keep shooting at you. Also, they will switch to AP if you're on fire and you're bowing to them, so haha. <laughs> get to about the middle of the map and just reverse. That's all you gotta do. Keep going back and forth until you die or the game ends. And you just keep shooting your guns until the game's over. Bonus if points if- lucky. If you get lucky, uh, you can find an AP only cruiser. Bonus points if you can find a destroyer and you're taking a hydro equipped cruiser. Makes it very easy to spot and dodge the torpedoes. And that's a lot of potential damage that just flies right past you. So uh, those are all things that you can do in co op very easily. I routinely get 3, 4 million HP damage or potential damage in co op using what I just said, in Moskva especially. Um, help your team cause 500,000 damage upon your spotting and destroyer. I mean, like I said, play ranked battle, play a stealthy destroyer. You can do it in random. This one's really hard to do in, in co-op just because, I mean, things die very quickly. You wouldn't want to play a very fast destroyer. You'd want to use your engine boost immediately. So I'm thinking uh, like the Italian or uh, pan-European destroyers because they've got the extra oomph with their engine boost. Get you up to speed as quickly as possible. I would honestly say clubber. Well, just could work YOLO. Too, hmm? Yeah, just YOLO the nearest destroyer, kill him, and then mm -hmm. just sit there dodging everything. Mm -hmm. Yep, Pockington, you were part of those sessions, right? You learned a lot about potential damage from that, didn't you? That was a lot of fun to do. We did it on stream. Uh, help your team cause damage. Again, it's a submission. Set it aside. And then damage to ships in ranked or randoms. For this one, particularly, if you're causing HP damage to ships, I recommend an HE spamming ship. Hindenburg, Conqueror come to mind as good choices. Spamming HE only, just burn all the things. Side effect, you'll get a Wither or, or 12 achievements while you're doing it, and people are going to hate you because you just make the world burn. Do it in randoms too. Uh, mm -hmm. Ranked, there's mm -hmm. just not as much HP to go around. Correct. Another reason, by the way, another reason to play Battleship, especially in ranked, is because you are at least ensuring one more Battleship on the enemy team. All right, last shot. One month and nine days from now, one million HP damage to ships with the main battery or secondary battery. That's a lot. Just play the game, though. You'll get there in 10 to 20 games in a standard random game. Um, damage ships by setting fires or floods. I mean, this has the Yakizuki Kitakaze all over it, as usual. Um, Commander XP. The nice thing about this is you can boost it. So if you're falling behind, if you're not ready to get to eight, you can always uh, you can always use boosters. Same thing for the free XP, you can use boosters. So those are nice and friendly, and they are they do synergize very well with clan battles. Assuming clan battles is going on during that time, they should be. I think clan battles is from like late May to early July, so that's about the right time. It, yeah, um, it's hard to say right now. I, I don't want to sit there and look at calendars, do the math, and all that. But you know. Just putting that out there is good options. Um, spotted ribbons, carrier, 325, that's that's a lot of spotted ribbons. Like we said before, co-op it, whatever, be done. Uh, that 40, one, that hmm? one, honestly, I just put it on the side because mm -hmm. if you get like 12 spots per game, even mm -hmm. in co-op, that's mm -hmm. about 20. You no, that's about 30, spots in co -op. 30. Oh, it's 9 on 9. So it's you're probably forever. yeah you're probably looking at closer to seven spots per game, so yeah it's gonna take forever. This is a good one to maybe complete while you're working on whatever the carrier mission is for for eight. Uh, get forty five kills in battleships. That's pretty easy, especially in co op if you yolo in. Side note: if you find yourself playing co op in a battleship and you get frustrated because people always are stealing your kills, you are playing the wrong battleship. You do not want to play the standard Vermont line battleship in co-op, at least in my opinion. Those things are just too damn slow. It's not going to get you there in time. You're better, far better off playing an engine boost equipped battleship. Jason with the sub over on YouTube, thank you much. Uh, you're going to want to get uh, into the battle as quickly as possible. So this one would be a good opportunity for French battleships especially, um, like the Burgon. Brigand's a great one. You got the engine boost. Get in there. Uh, get into get into it. Um, 
You could also maybe try Incomparable. Um, Incomparable could be a lot of fun because you got the torpedoes that you can smash into something as well while you're boosting. You've got the high caliber guns that you can absolutely obliterate cruisers with. So maybe Incomparable is a good choice. Um, but I, I would still, I would still say um, the, the French battleships. Ah, yeah, British battle cruisers would be a good choice too, Cthulhu. Yeah, um, the Georgia. Georgia is a good choice because it's got engine boost. Yeah. So, some some things to think about for there. Um, and then twelve and captured forty three is great for that. Yeah. Also has an engine boost. And torpedoes and secondaries. Absolutely. You take something with a low reload where you can snipe the kills, like if you have an Illinois, for example. Yeah, a, a high DPM ship, right? Yeah, absolutely. With 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 uh, with fast uh, fast uh, reload. Um, it's a it's a nasty stage though. Like all these yeah. requirements. Like if you break it down, you are looking at like a lot of games for that. Well, remember what I said at the start of the video. You weren't here for that. Of course you can, Nova. Um, remember what I said at the start of the of the uh, the talk here, and that is that the initial stages are always deceptively easy, and the last stages are always incredibly grindy. And they do that on purpose. They want you to grind, baby, grind to get these dockyard things done. Because if you don't, go back to what Cthulhu said. You have to make a choice at that point. Do you finish the dockyard with the balloons, or do you walk away? Um, and a lot of point at that point, um, psychology, sunk cost fallacy, all that good stuff. You've already invested this much into it. You're probably going to spend the doubloons. That's why I said at the start, I always recommend considering picking up one of the two booster packs or both, the starter booster packs, whatever you call them. Anyway, uh, assisted or uh, captured in cruisers. This one is kind of difficult because it's cruisers. You, you don't have the, uh, the best of concealment. So you want to take either really good concealment cruisers, like one of my favorite tier eights, the um, the what is it? Um, crap, I can't remember the name of it. The the Spanish one that I love so much, uh, the Mexico. premium. What? Numanic, Numancia. Numancia. Thank you. I I I remember to start with an N. Um, that's one of my favorite cruisers. Really good concealment, or a cruiser that's got smoke, like an Italian cruiser. It's got the fuel smoke. That would be really good to, to have. Gets you into a cap, allows you to cap it. But again, cruisers. The problem with cruisers is when you're playing co-op, you have to get through the destroyer on that side first or the, or the, uh, or the sub. And yes, again, this is when you always run into standard battles when you're trying to do this mission. Um, so this one's really hard to do as well, I would say. Um, yeah, I would say say just yolo in a co-op you'll get one per game hopefully and yeah that's good enough pray you spawn on the flank and you get a you get a uh, domination if you spawn in the middle and domination it's really hard to do because everything can shoot you um yes. destroyers it's twice as many i really I'm, I'm really frankly saddened to see that there is no uh base defense ribbons because that one's the easier one to farm uh 210 again Put it to the side. And then in one battle, 2,500 base XP. Get good. <laughs> Sandwiches! Thank you for the follow. I'm giving Stevie some bacon. All right. For, for those base XP missions, literally mm -hmm. play a super ship and do good in it. It's, yes. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get 2,500 base XP after like a couple of games, in theory at least. You get North or Northern Lights cap, you can get multiple caps in co-op because the bots go out on the outside flank. Fair enough. Or play submarine. Yeah, you, that's true. Play a submarine and cap three bases and, and there's your base XP. Only that's if you're what... confident. Only if you're confident in the submarines because it's also right. easy to get nuked at the very start if you don't know what you're doing. True. Now, I will say this. If you're playing ranked, eventually you'll have one of these games. And I would almost say it's easier to have one of these games than to play randoms, in, in my personal opinion. But it, it, your mileage may vary. Play the game, eventually you might get that. But this is designed to be a harder mission. So, you know, this one is tough because there's a lot of missions that you want to set aside. The carrier mission you want to set aside. The cruiser mission you want to set aside. The sub mission you want to set aside. So, remember what I said before about choosing three classes? You're going to have to pick one of the three classes that you don't want to do here. So that's going to be challenging. Oh well. The last time you had a 25 
base XP game was Michelangelo backyard in PR. I don't know what PR means. Uh, Puerto oh, Rico. Puerto Rico. Okay. Also, asymmetric will be gone by this point. That's correct, Who Jam. Uh, Norfolk's gem, the last stage, a month and 16 days. Now, typically, you only have like a week to complete this. Is that is that the case right now? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it should be. Okay. So About a lot a of times, I think. A lot of times, the last stage is either the grindiest or the second grindiest, right? To the stage seven. But you have less time to complete it, which kind of intensifies the grinding. It's two weeks. Thank you. Um, I know there's a Reddit post where they outlined all the... All, I, just, no, I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, I think I saw it last night. So for this one, get 20 kills. Play the game. That's nice. 3,000 ribbons. Play the game. That's nice. 6,000, 60,000 base XP. Ouch. This play one. Play a lot of the game. This one, if, if Clan Battles is operational, and this is, so... Everybody, I hope you take this into mind and into heart. Clan battles, you have the ability of two different um, ratings to play, an A and a B. If you want to min-max this, I highly recommend you don't, you, you encourage your clan to not play the alternate rating until this mission drops. Why? Because now you do the other rating and it's an easy 2,500 base XP a game. Boom, 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 boom. You club your way up. Just putting that out there. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't do clan battles, frankly, the easiest way to get base XP is probably going to be brawls if it's available. Because the games are just super fast and you're getting base XP no matter what happens. Um, Co-op can work too. Randoms are probably the worst option for base XP just because the games last so darn long. So I'd recommend my rating would be Brawl first, then Co-op, or Ranked. If, you, if you're the kind of person that wants to get Steel while you're doing it, then just play Ranked and who cares? But it's, it's uh, a quicker battle time. So a thing about Co-op, for that one, you're going to be playing a lot of Co-op games. So just play Tier 5, Tier 6. Take a, have a couple ships ready, like... Mm -hmm have like three or four french destroyers ready to go just yolo all right mm -hmm. press w to up the nearest ship detonate go to the next game repeat mm -hmm. rinse repeat it'll drain your sanity quickly but you'll get it done faster exactly exactly yep just just keep going with that um i need to turn the lumia hut off apologize for uh the sound coming through on the, the youtube side of things but uh, SAT, you're absolutely correct. You have this is this is the this is the mission here where you have to not care about living in a battle. You have to harness your inner Robloxian plays. You have to find a way to die quickly. Now, I'm not saying throw the game. I'm saying die quickly. This is where you play ranked battles. Sandwiches, thank you for your Twitch Prime sub, by the way. Um, this is where you play your battles in and you YOLO in and you do as much damage as possible and then die and then start again and not care about the result of the game. You don't stick around and watch the rest of it. You back out or you go to YOLO, YOLO on <laughs> battle on call it YOLO on for this. <laughs> exactly. Paradox. Just play, just play, um, earn credits. Here's where you probably want to use your really good credit boosters and get it done faster. Just, just to ensure that you finish it. But again, it, it, it comes down to timing. I, on the last stage, I would just equip the, the boosters anyway and, and not worry about it. That's me. Um, actually, so the thing is, if you are, mm -hmm. if you only buy two stages, everything else is going to be much faster. So even 18 million credits, that one you can just lay it on the side because you're going to mm -hmm. finish it by spamming co-op games or whatever. That 60,000 CXP will take forever. So this is the hardest one. Yeah. Yeah. The credits, I would say just ignore that one unless you are specifically going for it because you've bought extra stages. Mm hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, causing 3 million damage to ships in a carrier. That's ouch. I would say take a secondary carrier, go in a co-op, YOLO in and rinse and repeat. Don't play random battles. Try that. That's a lot of time investment to try to get three million damage. 
mm-hmm. personal opinion. Now, I'm not a carrier main. There are carrier mains out there, like AF Short on Water, who will do this in like 10 games and laugh their way through it. Um, I'm not one of those. So, something to think about. Um, and you could do it in super ships, I guess. I have super carriers. Um, yeah, super ships will give you the most damage. So, play those if your credit budget allows. Right. Right. Um, cause damage to ships in battleships, 3 million. Again, secondary battleship, just go and YOLO, have fun. Uh, same thing. Okay, so at least these are easily to do. Just cause damage. You're not doing anything stupid and weird, like potential damage, get shot at or whatever. So that's kind of nice. Missouri works for credits. If you've got the Missouri beforehand, you get the extra credit income. Sure. Uh, good point, Iwax. 1.9 million HP damage to ships and destroyers. Again, same deal. This is a very nice dockyard, Baradet. I agree. These missions are a lot easier than other ones. Now here, here's where, in my opinion, you could make the argument for playing subs. Because 1.3 million HP damage with, with two ships with subs, if you YOLO in on uh, co-op, it's probably doable. And side note, you'll finish a lot of your other submissions if you've put that to the side the whole time. Mm-hmm. Look at this. In battle, earn one achievement in random or ranked. Wow, this is easy. I've almost wondered if Wargame may accidentally typoed it. I think they're missing a 10. <laughs> a zero at the end, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, one, I don't know what this is. Maybe, maybe, maybe they mean a heroic achievement or... Oh, oh that's a good point. Or, well, it's, or it's the wrong number. I, I don't know. Or maybe it's just... The, or maybe it's a gimme in the end. I don't know. Like, well, if, if it's a gimme, see. that's very nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice gimme. Honestly, like you're only concerned about the uh, token one, so it's mm-hmm. a nice gimme to have for one of your two extra ones completed. Mm-hmm. Cthulhu says it's a pressure relief valve at the end, and, and that I like that. That's that's a really good way to look at that. Um, either way, we won't know. For this one, for a month and two weeks from now. <laughs> so <laughs> let's not worry about it for now. For now, I would say play the game, enjoy the game, don't burn yourself out trying to grind through all of the missions, just enjoy it for what it is. I would say about stage three, if you find yourself behind, in other words, stage four unlocks and you're still working on stage two, or you're just starting stage three, that's the part where you gotta start, you know, rolling up those sleeves. And getting things done. So that's my recommendation. Even I can manage that, says Cthulhu. True. So, there you have it. Um, did I miss anything in talking about the dark hair? Anything else related to that y'all want to ask about or chat about? I would say make sure you don't burn yourself out over that. There are some people that have done that. And it is not very pleasant to see. So, Kingpin anyone? Like the- <laughs> Yeah, just rem- just remember, those are digital ships. Does he even play the game anymore or stream? I don't think he does. Who? Sorry, Kingpin. who again? Kingpin. Kingpin? Uh, I have not seen him, so I assume he uh, just left entirely. For those of you guys who don't know, Kingpin is one of the people that, that no life completely ground out. The original Puerto Rico, the grindiest of grindy, because Wargaming said he can get it for free. He wanted to see how much work it would be for free. He had a timer, and he streamed every game he played, and burn themselves the f out at the end oh yeah i'm also wow. thinking of another cc right now that uh it's not pretty really did they did they quit huh no this one didn't quit but let's just say he made a video he just published one and mm. uh just sort by controversial gotcha it's zap <laughs> Jack Fighter, thank you for the follow. No, it's not me, unfortunately. I don't play the game enough, especially now with me working for Stack Up. I don't have enough time to stream, and usually if I'm playing the game, I'm streaming. So, Red Rider says, I got the Rito for free as well. Rico for free, but you use the free doubloons to finish it. Right. There you go. There you go. For the um, first Puerto Rico event, I just spent $50. I just ground like the first two set of missions, and then I got the ship. It's like $50 <laughs> from. 
fifty dollars yeah. for me, I don't mind it too much. But yeah. not everyone's financial situations are the same, so. But the first two boosters for the original Puerto Rico cost mm -hmm. me like I don't know, seven thousand, eight thousand doubloons. The original it Puerto was. Rico was really difficult because you didn't understand how everything worked and everybody panicked because they said, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and Wargaming made it very easy if you just at least bought one of the boosters at the very start. They didn't tell you that. Like, yeah. two basically guaranteed it if you played just a little bit. And then three was like, one, I log in every day to... to do a bit of grinding. Yeah. Like, it was like, what, eight stages, I think, total, or seven? I don't remember. IWAX I says... I've got a video on my YouTube. If you ever want to see it, it's called Plan Your Grind Puerto Rico. Just search my YouTube for it and you'll see it. Um, IWAX says, I'm going to try to get the West Virginia on your NA account and think that's going to be harder than finishing the dockyard on EU because of the lack of ships on NA. Lack of ships you have or you mean lack of players? I don't know. Anyway, um, we're about to finish the Zat Chat. So guys, uh, those of you that are watching on YouTube, big thanks for uh, watching uh, this far. I'll tell you what, there's going to be a, a fun word uh, to like a ships you have. Oh, okay, got it. We need to put a fun word into, into the comments. If you got to this point on the YouTube video, um, what's, a, what's a word we can have people put in the comments, y'all? Uh, whiskey. Emperor. Put, put whiskey in the comments. There you go. Um, and thank you for doing so. And by the way, if you have any questions, please comment away. I watch. Everybody else goes in and, and does that. <laughs> Where old mommy does it now? No, I mean, this is going to be cut and put to YouTube later. So <laughs> when that comes into YouTube later, you can brag about getting this far by typing in, not wimpy, whiskey. You guys are like instructions unclear. Oh, well. All right, well, that's a that's a good long enough Zat Chat, about an hour long, so we won't talk about asymmetrics today, or we can make it a separate um, one. But I'm going to go ahead and cut at this point. Um, thank you to SAT and um, Grunty for jumping in, and uh, big thanks as well for Nate, and appreciate the positive comments, y'all. This is, this is fun to go through.